On this week's program, we pay a visit to KCRV and learn all about the company and its growing product line of light trailers and fifth wheels. Plus, we look at how to get your trailer up to a proper height for both handling and appearance. And later, Ivan Schmarter takes us to a unique destination in Central California where Mother Nature is the star of the show. These stories and more on this episode of Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. A couple of weeks ago, as part of our open house program, we showed you a new fifth wheel toy hauler from KZRV called the Venom. This toy hauler not only had the largest garage area we've ever seen, but was also full of unique design features. We were so taken with not only the Venom, but some of KZ's other new product offerings at the event that we decided it would be a good time to get an inside look at KZRV. KZRV is located in the heart of RV country in Shipshawana, Indiana, and like many other RV companies in the area, is surrounded by miles of Midwest farmland. The area is also home to one of the largest Amish populations in the country. Known for their strong worth ethics, skills, and craftsmanship, it's easy to see why the Amish make up such a large percentage of the RV industry workforce. KCRV was founded by Daryl Zook back in 1972, and with two employees began building truck campers. With the demand for their campers increasing, it wasn't long until those two employees turned to 12. Soon after, the company started building travel trailers and those 12 employees turned to 20. A while later, KZ added fifth wheel trailers to its product lineup and as they say, the rest is history. Today, the KZ campus covers 530,000 square feet and has over 700 employees. And that product lineup? Well, that's increased to seven lines with over 250 floor plans. Included in their product lineup are some widely recognizable brands such as the Sportsman Classic. This 19 BHS model measures 20 foot 6 inches by 84 inches wide and weighs in at 2,840 pounds. The exterior has a traditional aluminum siding and a diamond plate front. The 2016 model has an updated exterior graphics package, front window, self-adjusting brakes, and a roof-mounted air conditioner. The well-equipped kitchen has a six cubic foot refrigerator and the interior is definitely roomy and comfortable. Stepping up in size is the Spree. This 337 RES model is just over 37 foot long and weighs 8,400 pounds. This super light LX has a six-sided aluminum frame fiberglass composite sides, and a painted cap. LED lighting is standard inside and out. Inside you will find barrel ceilings and crown moldings with LED accent lights. The kitchen has all stainless steel appliances and an 8 cubic foot refrigerator. Across from the kitchen is a nice standalone dining table and living room area. What can we say? The spray interior is lovely, well appointed, and comfortable. When it comes time to call it a day, a king size bed isn't an option, it's standard. Coming up after the break, we'll check out the Durango and visit the factory and see what goes in the building KZ RVs. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. 
Aquacam, another great product from Thetford. Is it now the perfect time to turn your old pop-up tent trailer from looking like this to looking like this? Treat yourself and your family to a bug-free camping season with a new tent canvas from Canvas Replacements. To learn more or to order a new canvas, visit canvasreplacements.com or call 800-232-2079. Welcome back. Before the break, we were looking at KZ's classic and spree models. Another well-known name in the KZ lineup is the Durango. This particular model is a Durango Gold 380 FLF widebody and has five slide-outs. Along with all the slide-outs, another thing you'll notice is a lot of storage compartments, including a really large pass-through one. The Durango also has an all-weather insulation package with an R38 rating and includes in-floor water lines. In the kitchen, you'll find solid surface countertops with a recessed oven and glass cover top. This unit also has a 110 refrigerator and a second air conditioner. Go up a couple of steps and you have the front living room with plenty of comfortable seating where you can enjoy that 50-inch flat-screen TV and fireplace. We were fortunate enough the day we visited KZ that one of their production lines just happened to be building the Durango models. Let's take a look at what goes into building one and what you can't see once they're all put together. Like all trailers, it all starts with a bare chassis. In the Durango, you'll notice it has what's called a step frame, which allows for that cavernous pass-through storage compartment. At this stage, the leveling jacks are put on and all the colored water lines are being installed and run through the floors. This allows the lines from being exposed to the outside elements. Here we have the aluminum subfloor that is part of the six-point aluminum frame system, which also includes the walls and roof. Where the floors, walls, and roof mount together, you'll find wood stopped into the frame to allow for a stronger mounting points. We noticed a lot of little things KZ does that you can't see after the unit is assembled, like the way they wrap the bottom insulation liner up over the sides instead of just cutting it off. That's just one more step to ensure that there is no exposure to the outside elements. Another thing we noticed was that the cabinets are installed after the walls are in place. Most companies install cabinets first, then install the outside walls. KZ believes that by doing it this way, they get a better, tighter fit. Of course, all the cabinets are made right here in-house. And again, KZ does things a little different. Here, they don't staple their cabinets together. They're drilled, glued, and screwed together. We caught one of the thing KZ does you'll never see unless you pull the walls apart, and that is, wherever an electrical wire goes through the aluminum frame, there's a rubber or plastic grommet protecting the wires from abrasion. All these little things add up in the long run in giving you a better built product. As we move down the line, we see the aluminum roof structure with the air conditioning ducts ready to be installed in place. Once the framework is in place, the substructure is installed, followed by the reflective technology insulation. Once that's on, the Superflex roofing material is installed. All KZRVs have this type roofing material. With the roof and sidewalls in place, we again caught another little feature KZ does, and that's a drip rail with small downspouts in the corners that allows water to run off away from the sides. Remember those five slide-outs we saw in a Durango earlier? Well, it's time to get them in place, but if you notice on this kitchen slide-out, all the cabinets and even the refrigerator are already in place. This saves a lot of time on a production line. Now, here's a pretty picture. 
All these completed Durangos at the end of the line, just waiting for delivery. KZRD is now part of Thor Industries. Aram Koltukian took over as president earlier this year, where he continues to oversee the growth of the company, including the addition of a $4.8 million, 80,700-square-foot state-of-the-art lamination department that is expected to create another 125 jobs by 2017. There's a lot more we could cover in this story, like KZ building its second plant in China, or how they have a fleet of trailers available for their employees to use and critique, but unfortunately, we run out of time. You can continue to see and read more on the KZRV story by visiting our website at rollingontv.com. Is your trailer sitting too low or sagging too much? Coming up after the break, Jeff Johnston shows us a relatively easy fix. We'll be right back. At Icon Direct, we make more RV aftermarket products than we have time to list here, like skylights, fender skirts, towing products, and, well, you get the picture. So, the best way to see all our products and most likely find just what you're looking for is to visit our website at icondirect.com or call our friendly customer service department at 888-362-4266. The Truma Aquago Instant Water Heater is the first RV water heater to provide instant, constant, and endless hot water. The Aquago is made by Truma, a world leader in propane appliances for RVs. The Aquago easily replaces most RV water heaters and is the only hybrid water heater with a temperature stabilizer for precise water temperature control. To find an Aquago dealer near you, visit truma.net. Welcome back to Rollin' On TV. Before the break, we began our story about setting up a vehicle with the right towing hardware. Now we'll continue with installing the shock absorbers and other gear. Safety is foremost when working on a vehicle. We always chalk the tires and, depending on the situation, we use jack stands plus stacks of wood blocks as backup safety setups. Installing shock absorbers is usually a fairly easy do-it-yourself project. At times, you need to temporarily move a nearby item, such as this sway bar mount, that's in the way of removing the shock. Most shock absorbers use simple mounting bolts or studs to hold them in place, so changing them is a matter of unbolting the old and replacing them with the new. A shot of spray lubricant helps the new rubber bushings slide smoothly onto the mounting studs. Rubber mounting eyes here. Don't slide on the mounting pins. A little easier. Pressure at an angle to get this. Bill Steins are gas pressurized, so they need to be compressed a bit to fit them in place, and this can take a bit of muscling around. We left the rear tires in place for the rear shock job, but we removed the front tires for easier shock access. A top stud and bottom bolt hold the front shocks in place. Replacement with the new Bilsteins is a fairly easy remove and install process. We're not going to be cluttering up our truck with every possible bolt-on accessory in the book. However, we're adding just a few things that we feel really enhance the towing experience. One of those things is airbags for the rear axle. The airbags mount over the axle to the frame on your truck. And what these do is provide extra support for the weight that you're carrying in the back of the truck. Now, if you're towing a small trailer and you have a weight distributing hitch with the spring bars properly adjusted, you won't have a significant amount of sag in back because the distributing hitch moves the weight of the, of the tongue to the rear and the front axle of the truck equally. That's what a dist weight distributing hitch is all about. But if you're going to be carrying a load in the back of your truck, for example, uh, a truck camper, a slide-in camper of some kind, uh, maybe a fifth wheel hitch where all of the weight is directly over the rear axle, or for that matter, if you're not towing anything and you want to bring home a load of bark dust chips, that's where airbags can be a big help. 
One of the big advantages to airbags like this is you adjust the air pressure to match the load. When you're running solo and you don't need that extra firm support in back, you let the air pressure down and you still have the smooth ride out of your truck. When you're going to be carrying weight, you add air pressure and that allows you to carry the weight without sagging the back end of the truck. Now these guys, for example, this Sport Right kit is rated to carry as much as 3,000 pounds per pair of bags. That obviously would far exceed the capacity of this little Nissan truck, but that means that we have a lot of flexibility in there for how much pressure we need to put in. Now, there are a few things that airbags like this will not do for your vehicle. Number one, they will not increase your tow rating. Number two, they do not increase your gross vehicle weight rating. Number three, they do not increase your gross axle weight rating. Those figures are all established by a series of proving ground tests and performance evaluations that allow a manufacturer to certify the truck for a certain capacity for all those figures. Now this Firestone Sportrite kit includes all the pieces you need for an installation. All the bracketry, small hardware, air hoses and so on. The manufacturer claims this is a bolt-on kit with no drilling. Well, we'll see how that goes when we get started on it here. With the brackets bolted to the airbags, we use the upper jounce bumper bolts to secure the assembly in place on the truck's frame. Adding the lower bracket strap is also an easy bolt-on assembly to the leaf spring pack. With that, the airbag is installed. The air hose is a simple press fit connection with the airbag fitting and the air filling valve. Protecting the air lines is important, especially where raw metal edges are close to the line. So we used rubber tubing and the kit's heat shield braided cover plus zip ties to keep the airlines intact and leak free. We chose a well protected but accessible spot at the back of the bed for the air inflation valve. The final check for leaks is a bubble test with soapy water. The system passed, so it's ready for the road. Well, that's about it for setting up our little Nissan for towing. With a few pieces of properly selected equipment, and it's not particularly expensive, you too can have a vehicle that's just right for towing your favorite trailer. For more information about what you've seen on this segment or anywhere else in the show, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Watch for RV Business Magazine's RV of the Year Award Show to see which companies and which RVs contend for this prestigious industry honor. The RV of the Year Show is sponsored by Dicor, at the core of everything you do. Cummins Onan, our energy working for you. Air Excel, reinventing comfort. And Thetford going places. Also as part of this program, Rolling On TV will be presenting a special Truck Camper of the Year Award. The RV of the Year Award Show begins airing Sunday, February 14th and will air the entire week on all our stations and networks. For more information, visit rvbusiness.com or rollingontv.com. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. Never run out of propane again. With level check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com.
I'm here at the south side of Pismo Beach, California, in a California state park called the Pismo Beach Monarch Butterfly Overwintering Site. This is a magnificent site, and if you look around the trees here, you may not see a lot of these gorgeous monarch butterflies, but believe it or not, they did a count in early December and found over 30,000 butterflies are overwintering here at this site. Easy to get to. As a matter of fact, we've got two campgrounds just next door. Just over here is beautiful Pismo Beach, and there's lots to do and see. But your first stop anywhere between November and April should be this beautiful monarch butterfly overwintering site. I'm going to be joined by Susie Will, a docent here at the site, and she's going to answer all of our questions about monarch butterflies. Hi, Susie. Good morning. How are you? I'm just great, even on a rainy day. Wonderful. So listen, tell me about all of these butterflies and some interesting facts. Well, the most asked question here at the Grove is, are they on their way to Mexico? And the answer is no. This is their final destination. So beginning in about September, they started arriving, and they came from as far as Canada. But we have overwintering sites from San Francisco all the way down to San Diego. But ours is the largest, the most populous, and uh, people say, why Pismo Beach? And I go, well, the good weather, the good food, and the friendly people, the same reasons that all of our guests come here, too. So what do these little beauties eat? The adult butterfly is a, a nectar sipper. So it's got a proboscis that it sips nectar. So it's been looking for flowers around here. That's all they eat. But at Christmas, they stop eating. They are, it's called a diapause. It sounds like a hibernation where they absolutely use as little energy as they can to make it through the winter so they can mate. So they stop eating, they may go out for a little water, but they do nothing but stay in their clusters, which you probably saw a cluster, and their wings are closed, they're camouflaged. It's an amazing thing, but they don't eat anymore. So they're a beautiful orange and black color. As you can see on my fabulous oh, scarf, amazing, <laughs> right? But tell me, do they ever come in any other colors? No, sometimes they're a little lighter in color. People that walk through the grove, though, and see the clusters with the wings closed, they're the ones that say, I could have sworn the monarch was orange. And I go, it is but closed wings offer camouflage and it looks brown. They look like leaves. So people will walk through and say, I didn't see any butterflies because the camouflage is so good. But open up, butterflies are all about the same size. When they ellipse out of that chrysalis, they're fully adult. There's no such thing as a baby butterfly and they're all about the same size. Beautiful color orange. But that color is for another reason too. It tells the birds, don't eat me, I'm poisonous because milkweed is a poisonous plant. So by eating it as caterpillars, who are poisonous, where their coloration says the same thing, then that's another form of protection for them. When they, when they do come, they travel around and find the best campsite, and the configuration of the trees is what sells the campground to them. It's not the eucalyptus tree, because they're in a cypress tree. So people think, too, oh, they must love eucalyptus. No, because those are non-native trees. They've only been here about 110 years, and the butterfly has been here much longer. So when they find the right configuration, they camp. Thank you so much, Susie, for having us here. This has been wonderful. I'm so glad that you came, and the more people we get the word out to, the more we'll, they will be absolutely amazed if they come. Absolutely. So next time you're here in Pismo Beach, stop by this California State Park, the Pismo Beach Monarch Butterfly Overwintering Site. It's easy to get to. It is a pleasure. It's free. And you will be absolutely amazed. We'll see you. I'm Yvan for Rolling On TV. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on anything you've seen on the show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. And don't forget to visit our store where you'll find some of the great products featured on our show. As usual, this has been another fun production. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com.